Glory to God. Sound like somebody's anticipating a visit with the Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to your name, Father. Hallelujah. I doubt is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. I doubt is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Yes. Oh. God, God is an awesome God. God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God, God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a holy God. He reigns in heaven and never. Our God is a holy God. He reigns for heaven and ever. Forever 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 and ever. Our God is a mighty God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a mighty God. He reigns forever and ever. My God is a healing God. And He reigns forever and ever. God is a healing God. He reigns forever. Come on. Our God is a healing God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a healing God. He reigns, he reigns forever and ever. My God is a healing God. Hey. He reigns hey. forever and ever. My God is a healing God. He reigns forever. Come on, say. Our God is a healing God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a healing God. He reigns forever and ever. Oh, so 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God. Sister Don say he's holy, he's holy, he's holy, he's holy, he's holy. If you want to get stuck, that's a good place to get stuck, right there. He is holy, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's a mighty God, he's an awesome God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Come on and magnify the Lord with me. Let us give him praise together, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, you are not a God created. Not a God created. Hallelujah. By human hands, you are not a God depend on any mortal man. You are not a God. You are not a God indeed. Of anything we can give. Anything we can give. By your plan. Hallelujah. That's just the way it is. Hey, sing. You are not a God created. You are not a God. By human hands, you are not a God dependent. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God. You are not a God in need of anything we can give. Anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. Hey, I listen. You are God. You are God alone. From the first time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. And right now, and right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. Hey, hallelujah! Come on and give Him praise. Come on and magnify Him. He is God alone. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Hallelujah! Hey. Sing, you're the only God whose power, the only God whose power no one can contend. None can contend. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. Will never you're the only end. God. The only God whose word of everything we can give. Of everything we can give. You are God. You are God. And that's just the way it that's is. Just hey. The way it is. You are God. You, you are, are God. God. From the time you are on your throne. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. And right now, and right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. 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 From the time you are on your throne. You are on your throne. You are God alone. From the time you are on your throne. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. And right now, and right now, hey, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Hey, you are unchangeable, unchangeable, unshakable, unshakable. You are unstoppable. Unstoppable. That's who you are. Unchangeable, unshakable, unshakable, unstoppable, unstoppable. You are God. You are God. From the fourth time, you are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, and right now, in the good times and bad. You are God alone. 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 Unshakable, unshakable, unstoppable, unstoppable. That's 
who you are. That's who you are. Unchangeable. Unchangeable. Unshakeable. Unshakeable. You are unstoppable. Unstoppable. That's who you are. That's who you are. Unshakeable. Unshakeable. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. That's who you are. That's who you are. Fire! Oh, magnify! 
within me. Bless your holy name. You forgive our iniquities. We bless you, Lord. You heal our diseases. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Crown us with love and kindness. You're so good. Satisfy our mouths with good things. You're just good, God. And we worship you and praise you and give you thanksgiving this morning for your kindness towards us. A lot going on in the world, even in our lives, there are ups and downs, and yet you never stop being good. You're always good, God. You're always good, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your steadfast goodness in our lives today. Glory to God. Well, Father, we give you praise and glory and thanksgiving. We bless you. Thank you for a beautiful day that you've made. Father, we thank you for your amazing grace that you extended towards us by sending your son, Jesus. We thank God for the precious Holy Spirit given to us to lead us, precious Holy Spirit, and guide us into all truth. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Father, we declare your kingdom come in this earth, in our lives, in this church, in this city, in this state, in this territory. Your kingdom come, your will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. And we declare it so. 
We welcome you here, O oh God. Heaven visit earth, heaven visit earth, heaven visit earth. Earth needs you. Heaven visit earth. Glory to God. Father, we thank you so very much for godly covering. So we bless our apostle Leroy Thompson this morning. Amen. God, just smile on him. Wrap your arms around him and his wife. Bless their family. Bless the good people of Word of Life. We bless our overseer, Dr. Forbes. Amen. Wrap your arms around him. Use him mightily in the pulpit today. And Dr. Tracy, and we bless uh, the good people of Columbus Christian Center, the Forbes family. We bless. God, I thank you for everyone assembled here on this Sunday morning in the sanctuary. We thank God for those connected online. Lord, you know, we need to preach Christ and him crucified as the power of God. Praying that Christ will visit the people, the power of God touch the people, bringing peace to the mind and wellness to the mind and to the body, Lord God. We make peace with God through Jesus so we know everlasting life belongs to us. We thank God for healed, whole, well bodies. You know, the blood flow as it was designed, the heart pumps as it was designed, the kidneys, the lungs, the brain. We speak life to the body. Peace and rest to the mind, an ordered, steady mind. Holy Spirit, just touch minds, touch hearts, touch bodies today. We want to hear from heaven. I yield myself to you, Lord, as a vessel. Just want to say what you want said. Give us all ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hallelujah. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And the saints said, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. Give them praise and glory. Hallelujah. 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 Take a moment to greet your neighbor. Shake their hand. Say good morning. I bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to be here. We're going to work a little bit more from where we worked on Sunday. Not quite sure what the title is going to be. Diplomat. Would you look up the um, definition of diplomat for me? Diplomat, diplomat. Thank you, Lord. Thank 
Hallelujah. Maybe the Okay, yeah, look up diplomacy. Yeah. I know. Good old internet. <laughs> um, I'm looking at we're defining diplomacy, okay? The art of practice of conducting negotiations between nations, skilled in handling affairs without arousing hostility. Let me stick with the art of practice and conducting negotiations between nations, okay? Between nations. Um, being able to negotiate between nations. But for us, what I'm talking about is our citizenship. We are citizens of the earth, but we're also citizens of heaven. So we're, we're negotiating between two nations. God wants to use us to negotiate between two nations. Amen? So really, so now I'm going to bring up this term, a representative. Um, as kingdom citizens, as citizens of the kingdom of God, we are to be representatives of heaven. Okay? Because we're citizens of heaven too. Once we asked Jesus to be the Lord of our life, we became a citizen of heaven, a heavenly citizen. Jesus when the disciples asked, teach us how to pray, Jesus said, okay, I'll teach you. Say this, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So the prayer went straight to the Father in heaven, didn't it? Okay, it didn't say, oh, you wonderful person here on earth, believe in yourself. It didn't say that. The, the prayer is directed to the Father in heaven. And, and it tells you where the Father is, the Father in heaven, okay? So he says, our Father which art in heaven, then we declare the holiness, so there's the worship which went on today with our praise and worship, into his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise, it's a way, it's a way we roll up on God. And Jesus was teaching us that when he said, hallowed be thy name, okay? So our Father which art in heaven, uh, hallowed be thy name, holy is your name. Then he said, Father, we're praying that your kingdom would come. Your will, what you want, will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Okay? So I think we learned that probably, memorized that. If you went to a, a good, uh, my little church made us memorize it when I was a kid. That in Psalm 23. It's a good thing to memorize. Psalm 23 and the Lord's Prayer is a good thing to memorize. Amen? And over the years, we probably kind of do it out of rote memory, but now we're believing that revelation, more revelation is unfolding from that. So Jesus says, you look to the Father when we pray. Um, we give him praise and glory and honor. Hallowed be thy name. And then we say, Father, we, we declare, in essence, your kingdom come. What the kingdom of God is God's way of doing. Okay. So we're praying that your kingdom come, your way of doing would come, and your will would be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Which means, if you look at that prayer, that God's will is, doesn't come naturally to the earth. Mm -hmm. So to the, to the point where spiritually, strategically, we have to get an agreement with God and desire as citizens of the earth we're saying we're desiring for the kingdom of heaven come to come down we desire for the father's kingdom to operate not just in heaven but in earth and what the father wants we're in agreement with that you understand we're trying to negotiate between these two realms our father which art in heaven holy is your name father we're praying that your kingdom would come Father, we're praying that your will would be done. Once again, it's not the barber show. It's not the you show either, is it? So it's, you see, even in that little bit, Jesus is showing us how to align or line up under. Surrender, submit, align, right? So and my prayer is a prayer that's bringing me in alignment with what who God is and what he wants. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord, where you taking me, Lord? Let me just, hold on, let me just sneak into the book of Ecclesiastes. Old Testament of all places. Hold on, I got to go to my table of contents to pick this one up. Ecclesiastes is 8.59 in my Bible. We're talking about lining up, right? Okay. 8.59. Your kingdom come, Father. Your will be done, Father. Okay. I want to go to this last chapter. The uh, Solomon who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, which is an interesting book, he just didn't seem like a very happy man when he wrote this book, but he was just dealing with the affairs of life. But he said, um, uh, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 9, because he's gone through all of these mental and wisdom and just life thoughts he's had all in the front of the book, these deep thoughts. But then he gets frustrated and he says, vanity, vanity, everything is vanity. It's a frustration in this man in this book, okay? But then in verse 9, it says, 12.9, and moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order, order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are the goads are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh, gaining a whole lot of knowledge, just keep gaining knowledge, okay. Then he, then he, he just settles it all up right here. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Thank you. Thank you, Solomon. Let's get to the point, okay? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What does he say? Fear God. What? Keep his commandments for? It's the duty of man. Okay? So Jesus says, our Father which art in heaven, holy is your name. Father, I declare your kingdom come. Jesus said, I'm, what, do you see all of the, my dreams and my desires, God? Do them for me. No, he said, I'm lining up with you. Okay? What do you want today, Father? What's on your mind today, Father? I'm aligning myself with you. Earth is being called to align itself with heaven. And the reason why earth is struggling so bad is because it's out of alignment. But it is our job, who are both citizens and of the earth and citizens of heaven, right, to be used. First, we have to line up with heaven, and then God wants to use us to bring others of the earth in alignment with heaven. Because the preacher in Ecclesiastes said, 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments, for this is the duty, the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into what? Every work. He told about all works. God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. God knows all the secrets. In other words, even if it looked like a good work, God saw the condition of your heart in doing it. Was it coming from a pure place of just doing good? Or were you doing it to be seen? Jesus got on the Pharisees about that. Oh, y'all pray, make these long prayers, and you're just doing it to be seen. You're all out in public to be seen. It didn't say you couldn't pray in public. It says you don't pray in public to be seen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And God deals with the secret things with all of that, right? For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right, I'm just, I'm just working with the Holy Ghost here. Hold on, I'm just trying to figure out. Go on back to Ephesians 5. He might not let me go there yet, but we're going to work, work back there. So the whole of the matter is to basically do what God say do. To fear him, <laughs> have great respect for him, and line up with him. Do what he says. Do his commandments. In the New Testament, 
Jesus says, I'll teach you how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, we declare your kingdom come. Father, we declare your will be done in the earth as heaven. We are to be diplomats, negotiators between earth and heaven. We are to be representatives. Why? Because we once were lost and now we're found. Jesus is our Lord now. God wants to now use us and all of our heavenly citizenry, you know, we're new creatures in Christ. He wants us to operate. He will help us operate with heavenly help as we align up with heavenly goals, heavenly dreams. What's on God's mind? I don't want to hear about your dream unless it's from God, okay? Because the whole, the whole of the matter is we're to fear God and do his commandments. Now, that's what the ecclesiastical preachers said. Jesus said, I want to teach y'all how to pray, Father, your kingdom come. Father, your will be done. I'm down here on earth declaring that the will of heaven be done on earth. We're being, we, we are to be representatives. Okay, does anybody, everybody, we all good here? So now it's not who you were. It's not who you think you were. I don't, I don't care what class you were born in or what color. I ain't hung up on that. Who are you now? You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Who are you now? Right, right. Okay. So now we can go to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, 1 says, if we read it in the um, King James, it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Followers? What a popular term now during this social media generation. I think the younger people got a better, better understanding because we're saturated with people wanting followers. Okay, follow my channel. Become my friend. That's the one that bugs me. On Facebook, I don't know you. I want a whole lot of friends. People don't know you. You don't know how many friends up in there hating on you. Wishing for your own demise. I want this channel to go down. I don't want this channel to prosper. I'll become a subscriber for a while, but I don't really like this person. And you calling them a friend. <laughs> Five, be ye therefore what? Followers of God. Paul is talking to the born again people in the Ephesian church. He's admonishing them. He says, okay, now you know Jesus. And now that you know Christ and the pardon of your sins, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Can we see that in Amplified? It says, therefore be imitators is the word that Amplified used. So you have the word follower, you have the word imitator. We understand what imitation is. It's kind of copying. It's copying. It's um, you see a mentor and you, you just you take on their patterns, take on their way of doing things, okay? So it says, therefore, be imitators of who? Oh, but then I've heard even like religious people say, well, you know, we can't be like God. Well, Isaiah 55, I believe, is a chapter that talks about God says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. As far as the heaven is from the earth, that's how far my thoughts and your thoughts are they're far but it, it, in the new testament we know that we can become one with the father through the son jesus literally prayed that before he was going to the cross it's almost like you're connecting a train up you got god the father at the front jesus is the middle train and we're at the back and we're all connected which means we have access ladies and gentlemen to the father and help from him then on top of all of it, you throw Holy Ghost into the mix who comes to live on the inside, as well as the Spirit of Christ. Now we have the potential. It's not that we're doing it. Some doing it, some don't, some in and out of it. But we have the potential to be imitators of God with the help of the indwelling Holy Spirit, Christ living on the inside of us. We've been made new creatures in him. 
And so that's why Paul says, therefore be imitators of God, copy him and follow his example. Copy God. Copy God and follow God's example. Okay? It's not the me show no more. The world does not revolve around me. And how much sweeter my life is. It's so much sweeter since the world don't revolve around me. I was most miserable when all I did was think about myself all day long. Say, help us, God. Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy him and follow his example as well, beloved, what? Children. Children. We're children of God. So as children of God, we are to imitate God. I got a little sweetheart um, hero, my little grandson. He's just a sweetie pie, you know. But, um, you know, these little children, they're just going to take on what they see the parents do. They imitate the parents, right? They're going to imitate mom. They're going to imitate dad. What they see dad do, they're going to try to do it. What they see mom do, what they hear them say. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's raised children know. Got to watch everything you say around children because they will repeat it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, as dear children, we are to mimic God. Copy God like little kids. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful, actually. Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy him. Follow his example as well-beloved children. Imitate their father. Right. Children are watching their fathers. If they have them, they're watching them. And they're watching the mothers, too. And then it says, walk in love. Because this is how the father is, okay? Walk in love, esteeming and delighting in one another, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a slain offering and sacrifice to God for you so that it became a sweet fragrance. So one of the first things out the bat as an imitator of God is we must develop this love walk. We not move by a place of selfishness or bitterness or competition or I don't know, all the little things that people connect on. He says, um, walk in love. This is the attribute of God. As an imitator of God, we are to walk in love. And in walking in love, we esteem and delight in one another. Um, can you look up the definition of esteem? I think it means respect, but let's just get that. As we walk in love, we esteem and delight in one another. Esteem and delight in one another. Esteem, to regard highly or favor, favorably, to regard with respect or admiration. Now, as we become more like God, we walk in love and we treat each other as people in Christ. Okay, We regard our neighbor highly and favorably. We regard each other with respect and admiration. Now, this is a training. It's like training to imitate God. Do y'all understand? So in walking in love, we're learning how to admire one another, another to be favorable with one another. A lot of y'all miss, miss these ladies that came through this here this week. Man, them women. <gasps> them women. I just sat there stunned. Lady who came through here Saturday morning. Treat each other favorably. Walking in love. If you're a gossiper, let me just say this, gossip ain't love. If you're a jealous and envious person, God going to deal with you on that. Some other women can be catty, but men compete over other things. You know, money bankrolls and what do they call them stacks I don't even know they compete over stuff like that okay women looking at folks shoes and hair whatever okay man I, I could look at another woman see the beauty of the woman and admire her without feeling like I'm in competition man, what? that's cattiness that's low children low and it ain't love I'm to esteem her look favorably upon her admire her not be jealous of her it ain't love mm -hmm. 
Whatever the little traps we fall into, whether we're male or female, there are traps that are unloving traps. Love has a look to it, okay? Love is not envious. It don't boil over with jealousy, right? Corinthians 13. It's a love walk connected to us as we imitate God. As we imitate God, we look favorably on one another. I'm not looking to tear you apart because you got something I ain't got. That's called covetousness. It's just nasty, bitter, stinky. And it ain't love. But we're called to the walk of love. We are called to the walk of love as imitators of God. We are to walk in love, esteeming one another, our brothers and sisters in God, admiring them, looking upon them favorably. This is love. This is godly behavior. Amen? So as imitators of God, we walk in love. We esteem one another. Okay. Two, and walk in love, esteeming and delighting in one another as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a slain offering, a sacrifice to God for you so that it became a sweet fragrance. Jesus really did it for us, didn't he? He showed us some real love right there. Now, so that's what we do. This is what we don't do. So it's what to do and what not to do. Verse 3 is getting into what not to do. But immorality, which is sexual vice, and all impurity of lustful, rich, wasteful living, or greediness, must not even be what? Okay, let's stop there. Enough with the mistakes. Enough with calling sin mistakes. Stop calling sin mistakes. Sin are choices. Okay? That's a choice. A mistake is something you don't really have no control over. You understand? Let's say, let's say you have been taught well or you just kind of, you, you're doing some addition problems, two plus two, and you write down five. But you know it was four, but maybe you're writing too fast and you put five. Well, two plus two is four. That's a mistake. Yeah. But what I'm going to talk about right here is not mistake. This is a sin, which are choices. And just, just get it right, man, so we can call it what it is. When you know what it is, you deal with it better. Say, help us, God. Okay, three. Immorality, which is sexual vice and all impurity of lustful, rich, wasteful living or greediness must not even what? Named among you? Oh, you know, God understand. God understand it ain't supposed to be named amongst us. Greed ain't supposed to be named amongst us. Sexual vice ain't supposed to be named amongst us. Lord, I need my glasses on. <laughs> no. <laughs> Try to figure out, do I go back to the Bible? <laughs> Minister Nikki, boy, she, oh, she, she got her head on a swivel. Thank you, Minister Nikki. She know me almost better than I know myself. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> She's been helping me a long time. Okay. Must not even be named among you as fitting and proper among who? Saints. Oh, they called y'all saints. They ain't call y'all sinners. Right, right, right. You know Christ. You've been made new. You've been placed in him. Now, what Paul is doing is he's giving us a training class. This is a training class, okay? You know, sometimes we need to learn. We need to learn something. He's learning us something here. Let's back all the way to the beginning, if you can, of this one. But immorality, sexual vice, all impurity of lustful, rich, wasteful living, or greediness, which is so nasty, let's go, must not even be named among you. So if you find these feelings moving around in you, you got to put them in check. It's just like I wanted to get that girl at the McDonald's, right? Help, but the Holy Ghost is a helper, man. He'll help you. He'll help you. He'll help you. Because I wanted it. I wanted, I was angry with her. And I wanted to get her. The Holy Spirit say, B, that ain't love. Love is kind. I said, oh, what I was feeling wasn't so kind. What I wanted to do to her, what I wanted to say to her wouldn't have been so kind. I won't go cuss Miss Wendy. I ain't no cusser. I just wouldn't have been nice to her, you know. So he says, 
hear, learn what to do, learn what not to do, and ultimately we're learning about what is love and what is not love, okay? And so everything we're going, getting ready to go through here is not love. Maybe before we read the scriptures, we thought it was okay or it was a mistake. <laughs> I don't like the whole mistake talk. That gets my huckles up a little bit too, okay? Okay, now people make honest mistakes. This mistake ain't the same thing as a choice. Okay, must not be even named among you as fitting and proper. See, it's a, it's a proper way of doing things as a saint. I ain't talking to sinners today. I'm looking across here. Okay. I know y'all folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know y'all got a relationship with God. So that's going to put you in the saint category. Okay. All right. So he says, must not even be named among you as fitting and proper among the saints, the saints are God's consecrated people, set apart people. Did you know that when you gave your life to Christ, he set you apart? Do you know that when he set you apart, he actually brought you into himself? Jesus is not unsanctified, he ain't unholy, and he don't sin. Jesus don't sin. Now, are we capable of sinning? Yes, we are. But we ain't calling it mistakes. We got to call it what it is. Because if we sin, we must say, look, no, Lord, that was wrong. I repent. I, I don't. Right. But if it's a mistake, a mistake, if I'm writing fast, two plus two, and I'm just thinking fast, my brain ten, and I put five, that's a mistake, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? We're talking about moral vice, moral decisions. If I go out here, uh, I guess on, what was this, on uh, 460, which is orange, right? And the speed limit is something, and then speed limit, they can change, don't it? It'll be 45, and then after a while it's 35, and you didn't really see it, you really didn't see it turn to 35. But maybe you've ridden the road many times. <laughs> you got all distracted, listening to something or doing something. And that 45 turned to 35. Well, that's somewhat of a mistake. You did get distracted. Now, you knew you might have unconsciously knew it was coming. Or if you've never ridden the road, you just didn't even know. And it changed on you. It ain't like it was a flashing light. It was just a black and white sign that you tried to look at the road, right? That's a mistake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a mistake. But, but what, we, what we talk about here ain't mistakes. They're choices. Now, maybe our old person before Christ used to think this was okay, indulged in this. But that's why he's teaching us. He says, but now that you've become saints, mm -hmm. this is not the behavior of the saints. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Say, so help us, Lord. He working with us, training us, teaching us. This is what the apostle is doing as well. He's training. He's teaching the church of Ephesus, okay? All right, verse um, 4. Let there be no filthiness, which is obscenity, which I'm thinking these are bad, foul words, indecency, nor foolish and sinful or silly and corrupt talk. Man, the words can get us in trouble. But before Christ, we might have thought it's all right to do the dirty joke. But look at this. Let there be no filthiness, obscenity, indecency, nor foolish and sinful, silly and corrupt talk, nor what? Coarse jesting. I think that's a dirty joke, right? Okay, a lot of coarse jesting. Which are what? It, it, it don't fit you no more. Now, before Christ, that, I mean, y'all got a lot of entertainment, got a lot of entertainment out of course shows. But now, now we got to learn. It's adapt. It's growing. It's being molded and shaped into the image of Christ. Well, Jesus didn't tell dirty jokes. And Jesus was a joyful man. I think he had a lot of fun with his disciples. I think they, they did a lot of serious work, but I think Jesus really enjoyed them without telling dirty jokes. Okay? All right. All right. So anyway, let's keep going. Um, okay, four, let there be no filthiness, obscenity, indecency, nor foolish and sinful and silly corrupt talk, nor coarse and jesting which are not fitting or becoming, but instead voice your what? 
Oh, we need to always have a thank you on our lips. We need to have a thank you on our lips. Um, Thursday was such a rainy, rainy, busy, busy day. It was a busy, it was raining. It was raining hard Thursday. And I remember Friday when I woke up and I got up, I just remember, oh, thank you. Thank you for the blue sky. Thank you for the green grass. I mean, I was just thanking him. Not that I have a problem with the rain, but it's hard, harder to maneuver in the rain. You got to learn how to say thank you on rainy days too. Mm -hmm. Got to learn how to say thank you on rainy days. But I was so grateful for, okay, I thank y'all for the rain, but I'm glad for the sunshine, you know? So, it, and it, some people may see that as a small thing, but thank God for the little things. Just have an attitude of gratitude. And if you've got a lot going on in your life and you just don't see a whole lot of stuff going on that you can say thank you, turn to something that you can say thank you to. You understand? You know, you got a whole wall on this whole side of the, your place is dirty, need to be cleaned up. But yesterday you got this part right here clean. You say, Lord... Lord, I just thank you. I got this a little bit cleaned up. I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord. Right, right. It's a focus issue. Oftentimes, it's a focus issue. And you'll be amazed that thankfulness will create energy. It'll, it'll create this in you versus, oh, look what I got to do. But thank God I got that done. You know what I'm saying? Thank God I got that done. Give God praise and glory. Thankfulness on the lips. Thankfulness on the lips. All right, where am I? I'm five now, right? For, for be sure of this, that no person practicing sexual vice or impurity in thought or in life or one who is covetous, who has lustful desire for the property of others. Let me, let me say something about that lustful desire for the property of others. Covetousness is lustful desire for the property of, of others. It's not desiring to have nice things for yourself. It's kind of a hatred towards another person having something nice. It's nasty. Covetousness is nasty. But God does not have a problem with us owning or having nice things. And I always have to kind of work this out with people because um, sometimes people feel bad when they start doing good. Like, that devil is a liar, okay? He is a liar, all right? So I don't need that size house. I'll just get this. Well, I mean, if that's what you want. But if you want something a little larger, it's okay. Right. Where it gets ugly is you see somebody, yeah, you jealous of with it, and they got it. And you just hating on them for having, and you know, you would like to have it. Why they got it? Now, this is covered. This is nasty, okay? But God has no problem with his children owning or having nice things. And if he did, a mansion would not be waiting for you over in glory. Let me tell you something. Your mansion is going to be decked out, and it's going to be to your taste. Whatever the things that you enjoy, they're going to, they're going to be in your mansion, Father, making sure dad's right with God. He was getting ready to cross over. My daddy was a golfer, y'all. My daddy loved a golf course. He loved it. And uh, once I knew, I knew he was, had peace with God. I knew it. I said, Daddy, let me let, tell you something. Whispering in his ear. The night before he died, I didn't think he was going to die. I just let him know. I said, look, Dad, I love you. I said, I want you to know you're a good dad and you've been a good dad. I said, now you, you've got your relationship with Jesus. Eternal life is in him. Jesus said there's a mansion for those who know him. I suspect yours has a golf course on it. <laughs> My daddy was gone the next three hours. He left. <laughs> you hear me? No, I'm, he, I'm gone. I'm gone. Okay. <laughs> the last few years of his life, he couldn't play golf. He loved it. It's something that he loved. Three to four hours he was gone. He said, if it's a golf course there, I'm going for Jesus at the golf course. I do believe that inspired him. <laughs> God, he, he loves his children. That's why there's a mansion made to your taste. Because he loves you individually. 
He know we all have different interests and things like that. If you're an artsy person, you probably got paints and easels all over the heavenly paints. You might not even need a, um, a, a brush. You can probably do it with your finger. Over in glory. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So why, what, why am I saying it? God wants you to have nice things. He just don't want us to be greedy or covetous, covetous running after things because that's a nasty thing going on in the heart. And that's God competing with stuff, and God's not going to compete with stuff. It's a form of idolatry. So we don't want that. Um, but having nice things, God wants his children to have nice things. Amen? But a person who, who is covetous, who has lustful desire for the property of others and greed and gain, this, this shouldn't be among the saints, he's saying, okay? Okay? For he, in effect, is what? Next verse. Idolater. Remember, the things, when you're running out the things, it makes you an idolater, and God's not going to compete with it. Yet God doesn't mind you having it. See, remember I told you it's all about the heart. We've talked about this many times. It's all about the heart connection. Uh, the lustful or greedy longing for stuff, that all, that's all you think about. Well, where is God in it? You know, do you love God or are you just running after this thing? He's not going to compete. It's kind of like Isaac. No, yeah. When God told Abraham, sacrifice him. Ooh. Sacrifice your only, your only, well, he had Ishmael, but sacrifice your son. And Abraham passed that test, didn't he? And he didn't have to do the boy no harm. God said, I got this man who's going to, who's going to follow what I say because this is important. Amen? Yet, yeah, even in that, Abraham, with the almost sacrificing of his son, gave us a type and shadow of what the father would do thousands of years later with his own son. We got a picture, a type and shadow in the earth. Amen? Okay. He says it's idolatry. So we don't covet and we're not, we don't have greed, greed for gain or a bunch of stuff. We're not coveting it. It's okay to have it. It's, it's okay to endeavor to get it. In fact, God can, will make nice things come your way. Just I call them them little God winks and he'll do stuff like that. Just because he loves you, ladies and gentlemen, he'll do stuff like that. Okay. Um, has any inheritance. So people with these, I would call them spiritual character flaws, they don't have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let's deal with that. So these character flaws that we just talked about, greed and covetousness and sexual vice and all this stuff. Okay, people with all of the, uh, 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 what's another one I met? I think it was other things in there. But that's a list of things that can keep us from the kingdom of God. Well, Pastor Thomas, then, what is the kingdom of God? Is that heaven? Yes, the kingdom of God is heaven, but the kingdom of God is also God's way of doing, God's way of operating. God doesn't operate from a place of covetousness and greed. God generally, his, the two ways that, that come to my mind right off the bat is how God moves is by love and justice. Love and justice, because he's... He's that precious father who sent his son, but he's also the judge and the lawgiver too. So these are the operations of God, okay? So when we talk about the kingdom of God, all of those attributes that maybe uh, we indulged in prior to Christ, Paul is saying come away from that because it's not the behavior of a saint who's a person who imitates God, okay? So he's just, it's training. He's getting the Ephesians some training, okay? Amen. And we receive that training too, amen? All right. Because the kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. God is not um, greedy. God is not covetous. God don't have no sexual vices where we got up in heaven. No, I'm talking about Jesus didn't have them down here either. Because Jesus gave us the picture of the Son of God here. Actually, Jesus was the last Adam. Before Adam fell, Adam didn't have those attributes either, ladies and gentlemen. It wasn't until the fall that those attributes became. It just polluted and corrupted man, right? 
So what we see is the byproduct, the corrupted nature, the corrupted thought patterns, the corrupted behavior that come from the fall of man that comes from sin. But Paul said, no, but you're, you're new creatures now. So now that you're new creatures, let me teach you how God behaves and become an imitator of God. Amen? All righty. Six, let no one delude you or deceive you with empty excuses and groundless arguments. What? And it doesn't say mistakes. Mm -hmm. But what is he getting to here? The people who try to talk you into stuff. It's always a recruiter out there. They messy. They want you to be messy too. Let no one delude and deceive you with empty excuses and groundless arguments. Arguing with you to get you to sin. Trying to convince you that sin is okay. Yeah. Let no one delude and deceive you. And if you don't have a good, a good um, just a nice, a good understanding of this, the word, you know. Um, girl, I knew you win. Yeah, that was me back then. I ain't that no more. I don't do that no more. That's something you got to get straight right away with the people who knew you when, okay? Just, just, you know, you're an evangelist. I'm with Jesus now. I don't do that no more. And be upfront and honest with people. They respect that. And if they don't, kick them to the curb. Man, come on, man. You can't accept the fact that I changed. There's something wrong with you. That's your insecurity. That's not my insecurity. That's yours. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's keep going. Let no one delude and deceive you with empty excuses and groundless arguments for these sins. And everything we named up here was a sin. For through these things, what? The wrath of God comes, what? Sons of what? Oh, he's warning us. He's saying, okay, this might have been what you were, but now you're in Christ. Now, this is how, what you are becoming. You have to imitate God. These, the thing that is God is the way of love, okay? Be respectful of one another. The thing that aren't God is sexual vice, greed, covetousness, all of that stuff he named. Okay, so that's something he says, steer from that. It, this, is not, this is not the spirit of God, okay? It's sin, all right? So he says, um, it's those exact sins, those specific sins, ladies and gentlemen, I ain't know. You know now, okay? <laughs> those specific, because of those specific sins, it says through these things, that behavior, ladies and gentlemen, what's coming? Now we're going to meet the judge. If outside of Christ, we're going to meet this person here. Now that's the judge. But we're talking about the same God. We're talking about the Father who loved us and sent his son to die for us, who's calling us unto him, calling us out of sin, calling us out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. That's the Father's heart. And yet the same Father is the one who will act as judge to the sons of rebellion and, next, disobedience. Now, all of those things that they named prior are attributes of sons of disobedience or sinners. We are in Christ now called to imitate God, to become more like God, to behave, to learn of him, Jesus said, learn of me, and to take on his behavior, okay, to grow in that, okay? If we choose not to do that, we are exhibiting the behavior of the sons of disobedience, and that behavior is going to come up under judgment. Do we understand that? All right, so I don't want to be categorized or confused. I don't want nobody confusing me, okay? Well, you know, I'm saved by grace, but, but you, look like the, you look like the son of disobedience. You don't even look like grace. You don't look like Christ. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just saying According to Paul, and he's very specific about it. They, these catty women hating on other women. Stop it. It's nasty. And it's sinful. It's not the behavior of Christ. Jesus didn't go around, didn't go around comparing himself to the other guys. Checking his wallet to their wallet. 
I don't know his mule to their mule. I don't know. What did they do? His ox to their ox. Because you know, they got portions now. We got you know, everything else, right? That's a man thing more so, you know. But it's nasty. Jesus didn't do that. So he said, we got to take on his character. Got to learn how to respect one another. Be favorable to one another. Esteem one another. This is God. Godly behavior. Amen. But the sons of disobedience don't do that. Well, that, that, that conduct is going to come under judgment. Right. And so this is, this is Paul's giving us a, a warning about that. Don't be comfortable with that. I once was lost and now I'm found. I'm under training. I'm being processed. I'm growing up. But he's going to be very specific about things, right? To not indulge in. Next. Ready, read. I like this one. Oh. So when we cut connections of people who refuse, don't like our Jesus, you go to them and say, look, look, I don't club no more. I ain't no clubber no more. I'm not going to be dropping it like it's hot. <laughs> I'm not going to be... Doing no whiskey out there and stumbling. I'm not doing that no more. Okay? I'm getting off the pole. If you're a pole dancer, we talked about this Wednesday. You got to come up off the pole, okay? Okay? That's the behavior of a son of disobedience. But I'm not a son of disobedience no more. Right, right, right. I'm not saying I'm a perfect that was born in this earth. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I once was lost and now I'm found and I'm going to stay. I'm going to walk the course of the found. I once was blind and now I see and I'm going to walk the course of the sea, the person who can see. So if they say, well, you just this, you just that, you just that, you know, we can't be friends no more. Okay, bye. <laughs> Honestly, if you're bonding over sex, drugs, and rock and roll, it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> if that's the only thing, oh, you the weed man, a pastor. <laughs> weed is legal now. I can always find him. He always got good liquor. Oh, you the lick. See, we bonding over liquor. Bonding over liquor. Bonding over weed. Sex, drugs. Bonding over sex. Well, you know, I ain't, I ain't that person no more. Well, then I don't have no use for you no more. Okay, bye. Okay. You got to cut them loose. You got to cut them loose. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. How that music is what's, what's coming through there. Mm, that's not Christ. You know, this is all the music I like. Come on, get one. That's nah, nah. No, I'm going to back on up. Because I'm going to want to change the channel. You're going to want to keep the channel. We're just going to call it a day. I'm, I'm going to pull on the whale. How about that? So do not what? Associate or what? That's how you protect yourself. It's how you protect the anointing. It's how you protect your, your, your connection to God. It's how you connect to protect your saintness. Mm -hmm. What are you going to think? Oh, uh, who cares? Now, that's me all day long. And ho my whole thing is, if you no longer like me because I've stopped doing this with you, then you never really like me. When I had friends, when I really got saved, I told my friends, right, I'm not going to the parties no more. I didn't lose not one friend. They were like, okay, we're going. We going. We'll see you when we get back. Okay, bye. But they came around later. They did. So I didn't really lose friends, not real friends. Right. I didn't lose real friends. Real friends actually like you, whether you're doing everything they do or not. That's what you call a really true friend. But if they're going to uh, kick me to the curb because I don't do the parties no more, then buy, 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 buy. Do not associate or be sharers with them, the scripture says. Y'all hear that? That's like being unequally yoked. Don't be unequally yoked with the unbelievers. 
with an unbeliever. Now, some people do hang on because they really like you. Now, they'll know it's Friday night or Saturday night. I ain't calling you to go out here. But I'll see you Sunday. I ain't coming to church with you, but maybe we'll have brunch. Okay. Now, I'm not really going to try to hear blow by blow everything that happened at the club. I'm not really trying to hear that either. But let's talk. And I'm going to talk to you about Jesus. But we can be friends. We can bond over checkers. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Y'all don't even play checkers no more, do you? Everything is on that phone. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Go, go play Monopoly. I don't like Monopoly. Okay. So do not associate or be sharers with them. Next. <laughs> Lisa Hurt over there. For once you were what? And, but now you what? So repeat this after me. I am light in the Lord. I am light in the Lord. I am light in the Lord. It's who we are now. We're not saying we were always this. In fact, we were not always this. But Jesus has called us out. Uh, God has called us out of the darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, the scripture says. It's a different kingdom. And remember, what, we, what did we talk about earlier? We brought up the term of diplomat and representatives. Who's going to represent God here? Church people who are stumbling over drunk and think it's okay, sleeping around think it's okay, Whatever, whatever, all these little attributes, you, you the big gossip, you the big gossip, okay, you the, you the one hating on somebody, woman, hating on somebody's shoes, men don't really hate, well they hate over tennis shoes, they might hate you over some tennis shoes, <laughs> got some new Jordans, who do you think he is, you know, uh, but women generally gonna hate you over something like that, all right, that, that ain't, that ain't Jesus, it's not the light, but we are light now, the light has a love walk. Now, uh, well, back, this, back that up to that last scripture. I guess it's seven. Don't associate. So here's what you hear a lot of people saying. You think you're better than me. Well, that's a person with low self-esteem because none of my friends ever said that to me because they respected who I had become, what was going on in my life. They weren't ready to do it. Not right away, although all of them came in. Absolutely every single one of them did. You see what I'm saying? But they liked me enough as a person that they didn't want to lose me as a friend. But we, we didn't bond over some things. But like I say, break out the Monopoly boy. Let's play. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. But I ain't going to the party. I was young. It wasn't that deep back then, okay? But there are others who will retaliate. And that's when you know there's a spirit work. Usually it's a self-esteem issue going on, I think. Because if you say, look, I'm not going to be able to do this with you anymore because I'm walking with Jesus, I'm a believer, and I'm saved. Right. If that person can't respect that, and then they want, well, you think you're better than me. I didn't say I was better than you. Well, you know, you think, that's a person who's trying to, they're trying to negotiate bring you back to them or drive you away from them. That's something going on in them. That's not something going on in you. I've been very upfront with you and told you what's going on with me. Now you want to kick me to the curb or call me names. She, she in that church now, she thinks she better than us. And people who say that, it's something going on in them. I'm just trying to not go to hell. I want to meet God when I die. And I want you to meet him too. But I'm not going to bargain with you around sin to keep your friendship. Absolutely not. But like I said, real friends hang on to you because they like you. So do not associate or be sharers with them. Next. For once you were, we were, we were, we were, it's who we were. Once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Next. Lead the lives of those what? Native born to light. It's a life change. It's a lifestyle change. It's a direction change. 
this is, I'm going in the direction of the lost. I once was lost, but when I was found, I started, I turned direction. I have decided to follow Jesus. I'm not turning back. No, I'm going to keep going towards Jesus. Right? Though none go with me. I like that verse. Still, I will follow if I lose every friend, which I was fortunate not to lose one. But some people will lose friends. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Jesus is my best friend. Let's keep going. Where am I? Say it again. I'm at eight. I'm way up there. Lord, okay. What's the time? Four minutes. Sam Berger. Okay, eight. For the fruit, the effect, the product of the light or the spirit consists in every form of. Now, this is light, which is the spirit. Kindly goodness. What? Uprightness in heart. In heart and what? Trueness of life. Trueness of life. Trueness of life. Trueness of life. Uprightness of heart. A kindly goodness. Really, we're getting the attributes of love. Uh, it forgives. But it says that love does not rejoice in unrighteousness or iniquity, but love rejoices in the truth. Um, in this beautiful, and I think the revelation of grace is extremely important. It's, it's extremely important. People need to know they're loved. They're in the beloved. That God's not throwing you away, okay? That God has made a pathway for you to come to him through his son. And God is very gracious and patient to growth. That's love, okay? So we need to understand that in the grace, in our grace dispensation. However, remember when Jesus came, he was a man of grace and truth. So he's not going to fudge truth for you. So your feelings ain't hurt. Hurt feelings can sometimes help us. Let's keep going. Next. And try to learn in your experience what? Learn what God likes. Learn how to make God happy. Uh, Jesus said, our Father which art in heaven, holy is your name. Father, your kingdom come. Father, your will. We want what you want. Jesus was our example. We are to have the mind of Christ. He was always in tune to the Father, surrendered. Uh, and, and Jesus had his own will and his own emotions, but he was anchored in what the Father wanted. Well, we need to adapt that because sin is such a selfish thing. And we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity and we just have a tendency to just think, me, 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 me. It's almost babyish how we can be sometimes. Help, say, help us, God. Help us, God. And that's the nature of sin. It's selfish. Uh, he says, but try to learn in your experience. Now, you thought about your life. You think about yourself all the time. Okay, how about you give God an hour? Now, I ain't even telling you. I'm, I'm talking about on your knees praying. I'm saying you can actually take your mind off of yourself as you're working during the day. As You, you understand what I'm saying? It's almost like we have to train. It's a training we go through. And, and Paul says, try to learn in your experience what is pleasing to the Lord. So that means we have to consider him. We have to prefer him. We got to learn of him. I, I don't, I'm not sure. I, have, I was a sinner. What, what pleases the Lord? That means I actually got to kind of seek it out. What does God like, right? Try to learn in your experience what is pleasing to the Lord. Let your lives be constant proofs of what is acceptable to him. Oh, now we're talking about being a witness. Proof. My life is proof that I've met Christ. So this is when we get into the fruit now. Um, so God, through, through our training, through our learning, okay, we know you're not super saint overnight. We understand that. Okay, we understand that. So through our training, through our learning, God wants to develop us so that our lives can be proof of what is acceptable to him, a witness of him. Let's keep going. Take no part and ready read. Have no fellowship 
with the fruitless deeds and enterprise. What a, what a word, enterprises. It's like it's a whole organization out there, an organized darkness. I mean, the devil got a, he got a format. We ignorant of it. The Bible says don't be ignorant to his devices. Not that you want to be thinking about the devil all the time, but we need to know we got a real enemy out there. So take no part and have no fellowship. Re continue reading with the fruitless deeds and the enterprise of darkness next. But be so in contrast as to expose, reprove, and convict. God wants to use you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? He wants you to be a witness of him. The earth... The world is, they can't see God. They can only see us. Once again, representatives, ambassadors, citizens of heaven, not just earth. And we're working in diplomat. We're working between two nations, trying to reveal the nation of heaven to the people here on earth. Somebody's got to do it. Jesus ain't here no more. Yet we're a part of his body, right? This is why we use the term be a witness for the Lord. Somebody's got to speak up for me. But let me just ask you this question. But are we going to listen to a person that we just saw um, shoplift? No. Right. Okay, I saw you steal that purse. Right. Now, I ain't say nothing. I saw you put it in here. I saw you rip off a tag. I saw, and then you walked out the door. And then you gonna come tell me about Jesus? I, you, I, what proof? Where is your proof? Right, <laughs> right. See, it's, we try not to send mixed signals because it's confusing to the lost. We can't nobody be like God. We gotta get somebody to start acting like God because. It's proof, it, 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 it brings exposure, reproof, and conviction to the people who don't know God. Now we have a responsibility. Do you understand? We've been given a charge. Go ye into all the world. Preach this gospel to every nation. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But man, you got to have a witness. I don't need to see you over there stealing at the Dollar General. And then you come out the door up to the church. Hey, do you know Jesus? Come on, people. It's, it's, it's confusion. You're sending me. Do you know the Lord? Right. Right. He's a provider. Right. You must know him. If we got a result to immoral means, I'm just I'm trying to give you vivid pictures. I know they help. So now what are we saying? This ain't about you no more. It's about pleasing him, and it's about you being used to bring others. But can you do it with a sloppy witness? Like, for real, can you do it? After a while, you're a joke. Now, I, I, listen, mercy and grace here, tons of room for growth. You understand? But the apostle is saying we, we're to be proof. And the only way we can really become living proof is we've got to learn how to be an imitator. We're going to imitate God. This is not how God would do. Lord, I yield to you, precious Holy Spirit. I mean, God is not into coarse jokes. God is not a, a dirty joker. <laughs> joker, the joker. Anyway, he's not a dirty joker, and he don't tell dirty jokes. So it, maybe that was something you enjoy before Christ. Well, yeah, you kind of let it go. You got, you, got to let, you got to let it go, okay? We they talked about coarse jesting, right? And maybe you, you, you say something, you don't think somebody heard you. You're like, eh, but they heard you. <laughs> You're like, man, I heard him over there. You know, he, he crashed, man. Well, change, right? Change. That's all we're saying is change. But instead, let your lives be so in contrast to the disobedient and the rebellious, right? Let your lives be so in contrast as to expose. Now, that's when they get mad at you. They don't want, they don't want their dirt exposed. But the ones who are really hurting and looking are looking for somebody like you. 
Now, light is going to expose darkness, and that's not going to feel comfortable to anybody, okay? But without the exposure, you can't bring conviction because it says expose, reprove, and what? Convict them. See, sin shouldn't be something we're comfortable with. Now, sinners are comfortable with sin because they're sinners. But once we become to know the Lord, we're to develop and grow in him. Sin is, is now to become something that we, first of all, we have knowledge of it not being right or wrong. But with God's grace and the help of the Holy Spirit, okay, because I know sometimes people don't always get it right away. I understand that, okay. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we're learning to kind of yield, our, turn our lives over to him bit by bit. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. We're turning our lives over to them bit by bit. And as, as people see a change, see, that's one of the reasons why my friends respected me, is they saw me change. Not that I was, I was really not, I, I, I was a decent kid for real, right? But when I got saved, I just went all in. Those saints said, for God I live and for God I die. That's the type of thing that was put into me as a 12, 13, 14. All out commitment, not playing church. So it was that that my friends, right? Hmm, this girl for real, like for real, for real. And it stirred their hearts. And then, man, just great. I mean, just, we just all got saved. I mean, like within a few months, we all got saved. So, um, so it's, but it was the change of the life, the commitment. The willingness to say, look, I, look, I know Jesus now. Uh, I just, I don't feel good about it. Them saints say, the saints, I call them the saints. I'm a little church of God in Christ, they the saints, right? What are Baptists? They church people? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But the Baptists don't use the term the saints, do they? You don't really hear Baptists use that term, right? <laughs> they Christians. They Christians. They've been converted and they're Christians. That's the, that, I'm trying to get the vernacular because each church has their own vernacular. But um, them saints told me right away, you know that music? They told me right away. <laughs> and look, this is the music of the 80s. Jesus. The, this ain't the music of the 2024. Goodness. You go back and listen to the music of the 80s, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it really won't that Compared to that, it won't that bad. But the saints said that music will get you. You got to watch that music. So that means I pulled out of the parties. You understand? Well, they like the music. My roommate Eugene, you're a good little Catholic girl. <laughs> we at JMU. I just love it. Dr. Forbes and Eugenia, those two. But Dr. Forbes was the debater. Oh, he going to debate you. <clears throat> now, he a little preacher kid. He ain't out there doing no dirt, but he liked the music and he liked to dance. Well, I was a modern dance. I liked to dance, too. I ended up pulling out of that. I kind of regretted that because modern dance can be used for the Lord. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but Dr. Forbes, went, I didn't go to parties. So Eugenia liked to go. And I told y'all, I went to one. I literally went to one party. And it was, y'all, by, by all stretch, it was clean. I mean, it won't like, people weren't all grinding up on each other, weren't a lot going on. I, I didn't see no liquor. I saw punch there. You understand? It was a clean environment, you know, by and large. But, um, and I got up and I remember I danced one time because it was a song that I liked. It was an upbeat song. And I remember saying, I have no business here. Inside, I was so convicted that I went and sat. And here's another reason why I went to the party. My roommate, Eugenia, she liked, and so we walked together. I went with her so she wouldn't be alone. I danced one time, I said, oh, and I had to sit down. And we walked back, and I'll never forget <clears throat> because I was under conviction. Now, she wasn't. As a good little Catholic girl, she just died, okay? <laughs> Dr. Forza, Baptist preacher's kid, he's just fine too. And I am under conviction because I've learned some things. And I literally took a stand in this area when I was in high school. Now I'm going to go to college. I wasn't comfortable. I got back that night from the first party, my sweet friend Eugenia. She's a sweetheart. Man, she loves Jesus. I'm telling you for real. <clears throat> so I said, Jean, I hate to tell you this, but I'm not going to be able to walk you over there with the party. I can't go with you anymore. Well, why, Barb? I said, well, it's the music, it's kind of the atmosphere. 
I mean, it's just some things that I know. I pulled back from parties when I got saved. Now, she's a good little Catholic girl. I don't know if she knew the term saved, but what do you mean? Because what the Catholics, they got their own little lingo. Everybody got their own lingo, okay? They got their own lingo. Well, I'm Catholic. I said, okay, G, I'm not messing with you. I'm just saying for me, I, I, I'm under conviction, and I'm not going to be able to go. So for a couple of the, a few more of the parties, different, she, we had some other friends, they all walked over together. And I stayed in the room by myself just fine on a Friday night, okay? And after about two or three more parties, Jean came. And she started, we started talking about Christ and salvation and giving a life. My friend Eugenia used to have what they call them, not night terrors, but peril, don't people feel like somebody's sitting on you at night. She used to have that. And I used to wake up and pray for her and it would lift. And she would sleep literally with the Bible on her bed. So she dealt with that. But once, when she started really growing in the Lord, she stopped doing the parties. And I think gradually that whole night thing, that thing left her. So... But it was my witness. See, I exposed something, not to put her down, but I was like, I took a stand because of the music, because that's what I was taught. All right, the saints, right? Church of God in Christ, the saints, right? The saints taught me that music is of the devil. That's what they say. That music of the devil. Boy, that was in the 80s. It's of the devil in 2024. <laughs> that means the devil come out with the horns and everything in 2024. Stripper poles, <laughs> the drugs, the gang banging, everything out there. That stuff won't around when I in the 80s. That thing won't making itself known so boldly in the 80s. So, but but it was my 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 shift and my stand that made my friends think about it. How far am I over, brother Michael? I'm 12 minutes over? There's no way. <laughs> All right, 12 minutes is too long to be over. Father, we give you praise and glory and thanksgiving. And thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. You're such a good God. And we just pray, Lord, you will just, just marinate the things that have been shared with the people. I want them to know, Lord, and make, make your, manifest your grace and your very power and presence, Lord God. Um, this sermon was not given to condemn and we come against any sort of spirit of condemnation we curse that in the name of Jesus if conviction comes that's good um, through our conviction it, 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 it opens us up to awareness of things we need to ask God to help with help Holy Spirit you know to control our tongues to control our minds help us Holy Spirit to control our words to control our actions help us Holy Spirit Holy Spirit, you've been given to help and to strengthen the church. And I thank you for that. I thank you that the people, with the power and the help of the precious Holy Spirit, you empower them to yield to the will of the Father, to adapt the nature of God, to imitate God. Help Holy Spirit. Help Holy Spirit. We realize it's not really just about us, which we're important. We, you want us to live godly, but it's also about others who don't know God as a witness of, of a representative here for God. This is part of what you want too. Proof. People are proof that God is real. Their lives and their lives changing. Their love walk is a proof of Christ in them, the love walk, the love walk. All of these do nots can be overcome with love. In other words, we take on love and we understand that the things that are do nots are not love and do not exhibit love. And so fill us with your love. Fill us with your love. May we operate and move by love. May we be guided by the Holy Spirit and the love of God. And may the love of God empower us to overcome any weakness or sin. Uh, empower us, precious Holy Spirit, empower us, the love of God, moving towards a different way of viewing life, which is not me, 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 but I'm learning how to please God. And that actually is more fulfilling to me 
as I learn how to please God, it's more fulfilling. I have a greater peace as I direct my will that way. We want to please you, Father. And we're learning how to please you. And you're a good Father. You don't leave us. You don't forsake us. Thank you so very much. Thank you, God, for the maturing of the saints. In Jesus' name we pray. All the saints say, all right, let's give them praise and glory. Hallelujah. There's one in the building who um, has not made a commitment to the Lord Jesus, and you want to do that now. You can come forward, and I'll pray with you. And most of you look like family, but I don't want to take that for granted. So if you want to make a commitment to the Lord Jesus, you can come to this altar, and I will pray with you. Salvation, a commitment to the Lord. Hey, Sister Doris, God bless you. Good to see you. Good to see you. So good to see you. Just stand right here. And Brother Larry, you come stand. Yep, look at me. Yes, ma'am. And Brother Larry, you come stand next to her and look at me. There is another. Now, you're here for what? Just prayer, rededication, what? Okay, we're going to just pray for you. Okay, Ms. Doris? I'm just glad to see you. I'm, amen. I'm glad you're here. Amen? Amen. Larry? Okay, all right, sciatic nerve. Yes, sir, I know that's painful. Okay, we're praying for Brother Larry. So when he got to move upon his body, we're just praying for Miss um, Doris, the, the wellness of the mind, peace in the mind, and, and God just help her. Amen. Is somebody else need prayer? Okay. If you need prayer for any sort of healing, you can come. Uh, we can do that corporately as well, but if you do, come for, if you want to come forward for healing, please do. Bless you, Lord Jesus. We have Miss Shonda. We have Miss Diana. Okay, if there are any more. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Healing. Wellness of the mind. Wellness of the body. Yeah, that's what we're dealing with here. Wellness of the mind and wellness of the body. Okay, for those of you on the, on the audience, just uh, point your hands towards them. Pray in, the, in tongues if you pray in tongues. If you don't, just pray in English, Lord, heal and deliver. Heal and deliver, heal and deliver, heal and deliver, heal and deliver Lord God. Touch him as only you can do, Lord God. You are the God that nothing is too hard for. Nothing is too hard for. Nothing is too hard for. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Nothing too hard for God. Miki todo go todo do go todo do go si te de yera bakata. And Father, I just thank you for your precious daughter. Miki da 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 de yera na na da da. We're just praying that the power of God will manifest in her natural body. Whatever is going on with her, Lord God, you know, you're the only one sometimes who can fix it. So we're asking for help and grace here in Jesus' name.
Okay, stand to your feet, everyone. Raise your hands to the Lord. So, Father, Paul said I didn't come with flowery words and great speeches. I came to preach Christ crucified, the power of God, in demonstration of the Spirit and power. So, Holy Spirit, I'm praying that you'll touch every person in this building. If they're dealing with a natural, uh, physical ailment or weakness or pain in the body, go in the name of Jesus, the power of God, the power of God, the power of God. Visit them as only he can do. Heal and make whole. The mind, anxiety, fear, racing thoughts. We curse that in the name of Jesus. God, if you would just wrap your hands literally as only you can do around their heads and just 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 squeeze a little bit there lord god those rattled thoughts settle down you're the god of hope you're the god of life of life and you're a divine protector your help of us with every stage of life. So the fears of the youth, the fears of the middle age, the fears of seniors, we curse it in the name of Jesus. Our confidence is in you. Our trust is in you. Our hope is in you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 We have nothing to fear. Not even failure do we fear. So we speak to, we come against that spirit of fear. Declare love, power, and soundness of mind on the people of God today. Love, power, soundness of mind settles on the people of God today. No need to be afraid. No need to fear. We come against race and thoughts. I don't know if the mind is hovering real hard today. So we're asking for a spirit of peace to come down. Peace be unto them, Lord God. Peace be unto them, Lord God. Peace be unto them, Lord God. Every person in the building, those of you online, peace be unto them, Lord God. Jesus. We receive your peace. Say that. We receive your peace. And just breathe that in and receive. Yes, Jesus. Receive your peace. We receive. No need to fear. God is with you. There's angels with you everywhere you go, everywhere you go, in your house, and your, around your car. There's no need to fear. God's got you. It's a job situation. Holy Spirit, give them peace about it and help them. If, if there's even a loss of job, there'll be another. You're the provider, okay? So peace. Or shift things around if it looked like, and then all of a sudden it's favorable. Things working out in their favor, Lord God. Peace. Oh, God, you're good. And we receive that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give them praise and glory. We thank God for peace today. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Glory, 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 glory. Praise the Lord. All right, we're preparing for tithes and offerings and gifts of love. Hallelujah. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Hallelujah. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. So da 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 Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's raise our offering to the Lord. Father, we, we honor you with our gifts, the tithe, the offering, and the gift of love. We thank you for all that's gone on in your name already. So grateful. So thankful. Thank you for peace. Peace. Wonderful peace. May our seed, our gift, be acceptable in your sight. May it be a sweet-smelling savor to your Lord. And even as we give to you, we declare we never put our trust in money. Our trust is always in you. But we thank you for being our provider. 
Thank you for provision in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for provision. good to be here. Stand to your feet. I don't have any announcements. I do. It wasn't in my folder. <laughs> okay, stand to your feet anyway. You need to stretch your legs, right? Uh, we will honor Apostle Thompson O, Founders Night at Camp Meeting, okay? So you will know that's in just a couple of months, like three months, right? And so our ministry goal, the church ministry goal, goal that we would like to sow into our apostle is $9,000. I will give you an opportunity to sow into the man of God corporately on the first Sundays in May, June, and July. Okay, just want to give you a heads up. You pray about your seed. You give your seed. Amen? Amen. All righty. Um, and July, we will definitely present it to Apostle Thompson. Second and final um, pastoral emphasis, our church outing will take place on Saturday, July 20th, uh, which is from 12 to 4. We will have the outing outside this year, but it'll be on our property down at that end uh, at the activity center. Um, but we do need your assistance, anyone who can help out with, I don't know, setting up food and what have you. If you want to assist with the planning or the setup of the outing, please see Sister Lanisha Reed. And I don't know if she's here today, because I know she was at the conference. Oh, is she working with the kids? Okay, she's with the kids. But L Lanisha Reed will be our, oh, there she is. Hey, hey, Lanisha. <laughs> so Lanisha will be our contact person for that. If you want to help us out, and we could use your help. Amen? All righty. Raise your hands to the Lord. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We'll see you Wednesday. <laughs>